Let me tell you why we're here briefly before we start our short program. First and foremost, we're here to change hearts and minds of our elected officials in Tallahassee. We're here to have our voices heard by our elected officials that they can't tread on our civil rights. We're here to register voters for the next election cycle, and we're here to register and apply for mail-in ballots. We're here to educate ourselves and the entire community on what's happening in Tallahassee with the vile, harmful attacks on the LGBTQ community. And first and foremost, we're here to change the hearts and minds of others. We would ask you to stay positive in all interactions today. If there's anyone out there that wants to engage you in a negative way, you will do this, please. Let me show you, then we'll model it. If you see negative behavior about our group, you'll do this. If you see negative behavior about your, our group, show me what you're gonna do now, do it. And now please return to me. We are not going to engage with negative talk or negative rhetoric. We are not here to attack any political party or any one person. We're here to support the LGBT community and make sure our elected officials hear our voice. Along that line, we have an incredible individual to start off our remarks. Please welcome Tatiana Williams, the Inclus from the Trans Inclusive Group. She's the co-member, or excuse me, co-founder of Trans Inclusive Group. She's also a council member for Equality Florida Trans Action Council, and she's on the Board of Governors for the Human Rights Campaign. Please welcome Tatiana. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. There's a lot of you out there. I can't hear you. I like that. That's a little bit better. I'm Tatiana Williams. The, um, I'm the co-founder and executive director of Trans Inclusive Group. Um, our organization is right back here on the Pride Center. But I want to challenge you this morning. So when I say something, I want you to follow me and say it because I'm looking at all of the people in this audience and we have to chant. I'm kind of a disruptive advocate. So I like to make a whole lot of noise so they can understand that we will not be erased. So there ain't no power like the power of the people because the power of the people don't stop. You got it? Let's go. There ain't no power like the power of the people because the power of the people don't stop. Again, there ain't no power like the power of the people because the power of the people don't stop. Got it. <laughs> So I'm hoping that we have a peaceful and productive protest today. So for me, um, I know I live a different walk of life than many of you. And I think we all live different walks of life, but we do intersect. And I think it's important for us to acknowledge that, that we are stronger together. And looking out here in this audience, I can see that we have exactly what it takes to be powerful and to do what we need to do to stand up against this government that is against us. As a black trans woman growing up and transitioning in the late 80s, I understand the assignment and I understand what we are up against as a community. And I want you all to acknowledge as we are here with our flags and our heels marching for our community, please note that in our trans community, we have trans siblings whose health care and lives are at risk. I want you to acknowledge that and I'm loving the flags, I'm loving the hills, but please know there's someone contemplating, is it worth for me to live? or should I just die trying to navigate here in this community? Yeah. As I stand here on the shoulders of Sylvia and Marsha P. Johnson, I understand the committed work and the assignment that I am tasked with to make sure that we move towards equality. I think it's important to also note that I see a lot of faces and a lot of other places, but 
if we don't come together and we don't stand together, not only just for something like this, but we also have to stand together for our entire community, the trans community. That's very, very important because we lack the turnout like this and this is what we need. I just wanna start off when I, I came here today with something totally different on my mind to say because Friday night, I, I lost a very close friend and the vice president of this organization. And in that process, I was en route to Sun Serves Gala, but I had to stand up and I had to smile because that's all I know how to do as a black trans woman. Even though I was in pain, even though I was hurting, I stood up and smiled. Yesterday, I isolated myself because I knew that this was important and I knew I needed to be here and me knowing her, she would like push through. That's all you do. So this morning, I am pushing through in her honor. I am pushing through for my community and please people, let's disrupt again. Let's disrupt this government and I thank you. Let me remind us all too before Tatiana leaves the stage. I'm sorry, you're stepping on my, there we go. <laughs> Those shoes of her, rhinestone. Wednesday is a very important event here in Wilton Manors. It's the um, Transgender Day of Visibility. There's an event at Flippin' Park on the drive that starts at 6 p.m. with a rally. And then that rally proceeds from Flippin' here to the Pride Center for an event. Please make sure that you're a part of that event on Wednesday night. The official national date for um, Trans Day of Disability is actually Friday, so there'll be throughout this week, you might notice the difference on Wilton Manor City Hall when trans colors light up our city hall here in Wilton Manors. One of the chants, one of the chants that your rally leaders will have, I'd like to repeat and practice with you now. The chant is, trans rights are human's rights. We say that three times. Please do it with me now to practice. Trans, trans rights, rights are human rights. rights. Trans, trans rights are human rights. rights. Trans, trans rights are human rights. rights. Yes. yes. Please welcome now our next speaker. This is Jasmine Rogers. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jasmine Rogers. I use she, her pronouns. Uh, I do statewide reproductive justice work. Um, so I'd like to say I feel very, very bittersweet being here today. Every march, every rally, every fight, every activation um, fills me with hope because that means, you know, we have something to be fighting for. We have community. Uh, and like Tatiana said, there's unity and there's people that are ready to take action. It fills me with rage because we have something to be fighting for, right? That we consistently have to fight for. Uh, it also fills me with rage because every single time it's also uh, this feeling of, there's been so much to fight for for so many years and people just keep waking up over and over and over again and where were you before? So being here this morning is a reminder to me, it should be a reminder to you that Black Lives Matter Right? Yeah. Yeah. That we have to protect, protect our trans youth. Yeah. That it's my body, my choice. Yeah. It's a reminder that we have to fight for immigrants. We have to fight for people without homes. We have to fight for poor people. We have to fight like hell for the living because there are way too many people that gave their lives for us to be able to have the privilege to march in the streets, to be able to fight, to be able to be here. And we always have to take action in their honor. It's also a reminder to me that while we have a very public enemy outside of us and we know who we are fighting up in Tallahassee, that fight also has to extend to your staff, to your boardrooms, to your city commissions, to your friend groups, to your families. Those fights have to keep going in everything that we do. 
When we are silent in those spaces, people will continue to die. They will continue to die. And no conversation that we don't have is worth the death of some of these folks, the death of people that we love. So we, again, we have to fight like hell. When we talk about reproductive justice, that is a fight for people to have or not have children and raise them in the ways that they see fit. To have or not have children and raise them in the ways that they see fit. That's freedom from gun violence. That's for LGBTQ parents and their children. It's for our trans kids, right? It's about clean water. It's about clean air. It's about healthy food. That is what reproductive justice is. And a part of that conversation is a fight for me to be able to do what's healthiest for me and my family. That includes abortion access. We cannot be afraid to talk about abortion. We cannot be afraid to talk about birth control. We cannot be afraid to talk about menstrual cycles and sex ed. We cannot be afraid to talk about those different things wherever we go. So I think uh, a chant for me that encompasses all of this is no justice, no peace, right? So say it, just like Tatiana had you practice, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace. No no justice, no peace. And if you want to get a little swaggy with it, you can say, if we don't get no justice, then they won't get no peace. Right? So if we don't get no justice, then they won't get no peace. If we don't get no justice, then they won't get no peace. So again, that's a call for their businesses. That's a call for their families. If you're gonna disrupt our lives and how we can love and raise our kids, you don't get peace either. So let that be a reminder every day that you wake up, like Tatiana said, how can we disrupt? How can we let people know that we are here, we are deserving, we are worthy, we pay taxes, and we deserve peace. So if we don't get that justice, nobody's getting peace. Thank you all so much for being here. And we have one more chant that Jasmine just shared with you. We're gonna do it together. My body, my choice. My body, my choice. My body, my choice. My body, my choice. Thank you so much for being here. Now I'm gonna introduce the next co-leader, um, somebody that you're all very familiar with. Please welcome our city commissioner, Chris Pacuto. Can't get his name right either. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'll have some things to say in a, in a bit, but you know, the truth is leading up to this, you know, as I really started to dig into the legislation, you know, thanks to resources provided by folks like Equality Florida, I realized just how crazy it is. It's, it's unbelievable, the assault on us. And I was feeling a little bit hopeless, to be honest, because Republicans have the control to get these things done. And, you know, I thought, who are we just to be able to get something like this? And I look around and I see the power of us coming together. There is no, that I can think of in history, there's no more powerful group than a group of LGBTQ people that are pissed off and aren't going to take it anymore. So, so I'll share in a bit some, some other stuff that we're going to do that I think will hopefully help disrupt things a little bit. But it's, it's my pleasure first to introduce someone who I consider a good friend. You know, the reality is when we make schools not safe places, when we marginalize LGBTQ people, stuff happens. It's real lives that are affected. Mental health is affected. Youth, uh, LGBT youth suicide, 45% of LGBT youth have considered committing suicide in the last year. And schools won't be a safe space anymore for that. So we end up having to rely more and more on agencies in our community that will take, uh, that will take these youth in and will be that safe space. With that, I'm incredibly honored to introduce my friend Tony Lima, who runs SunServe, which does many things, include help LGBTQ youth. Thank you so much, Chris. You know, it's wonderful to see all of you here today wearing your heels, wearing your pride colors, but the reality is that there should be three to four times as many people here with us today. So you that are here have a huge responsibility 
when we leave here today, leave this march and the activity surrounding the march, you need to talk to your neighbors, you need to talk to your friends, you need to talk to everyone that's around you, your co-workers, and let them know that elections matter and people need to go out and vote. People need to be involved in the process. I worked in politics, thank you. I worked in politics for many years and it's interesting because in the political sphere, when you're talking about legislation, when you're talking about laws being created, it's all very esoteric in nature, right? Like we're, we're like, oh yeah, there's a law being created. But as my little brother Chris said, these laws have real life consequences and they're affecting our young people, our black and brown family, our trans family, and much higher rates than anybody else. So we need to remember that we're here for them first and foremost. I run a, a beautiful organization called SunServe, and at the heart of everything that we do is mental health. And I'll tell you that at our youth center, Right now, we have a waiting list of youth looking for therapeutic care, psychiatric care, life coaching. Uh, their families are also waiting to be supported because we can't keep up with the need that's happening right now after Don't Say Gay last year and the series of other legislative notes coming down the pike during this legislative session. Our, our youth are very, very vulnerable and their families, mo a lot, more and more, uh, their families are affirming and loving, but they also need support. So I ask you to take everything that we're talking about today very seriously. It's fun to put on heels. It's fun. I know that's why a lot of you came out this morning so early. Because they're like, I'm going to wear my heels. Yes. Well, yeah, it's fun. And it's great to be in community like this. But everything that we're talking about has real life consequences. People die every single day because they're not accepted. They're not affirmed. They don't have the support in schools when we're talking about our youth. So we need to purvey this message. We need to tell everyone that we need their support. This isn't necessarily just about laws and rights. This is about life and death. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Thank you. So keep that in mind as we're, as we're having a great time today. And later when we get to Hunters, we'll see the drag queens perform and we'll be in community and celebrating. But remember that within the celebration, it's also a rally cry because we need to stick together, stay together, not just some of us, all of us, and continue to fight what's happening in Tallahassee. If we don't, it's only going to get worse. We've seen what's happened over the last year, just in the last year with this this guy that calls himself a, a leader in, in Tallahassee. So, absolutely boo, what a mess. But it's up to us, right? That's why we live in a democratic society. We all have a vote. There's a lot of people that don't go out and vote because they're not really empathetic or engaged. There's a lot of apathy out there. So it's up to us that are here, again, as I said before, to talk to everyone that you know, make sure that people get out and vote, make sure that we're electing leaders that represent all of us, not just some of us, and that we continue to support our most marginalized communities. Thank you so much. In this process, having representation that represents us is incredibly important. Uh, I have to admit that before we started, I was talking to, uh, to, to Gary and Bud. I said, you know, Representative Campbell, I don't know if he realized when he talked to me Wednesday, when he got on the phone, literally jumping from car, from meeting to meeting, because they're in session. I was like, I don't think he knew what he was saying when he said he would be here Sunday because being down here in the middle of session is, is next to impossible. I, we are lucky to have representatives that represent us and our interests. There are even... Democrats that have voted in support of Don't Say Gay. It's, it's really tragic. So it's an honor to welcome someone who's, who's obviously happy to be here. Delighted to have you. Help me uh, welcome uh, Representative Campbell to the stage. Good morning, good morning. It's such a pleasure to see all your faces out this Sunday morning coming out in support of this terrible, terrible legislation. 
uh, as as we know, you, we're we're currently in section, and and they're throwing everything but the kitchen, but the kitchen tank sink at us. And so as we as we continue, um, we know that representation is important. Representation looks different for many people. Oftentimes, it's seeing people that look like you in spaces that are not meant to look like you. I know a lot about being in spaces that weren't created for me. Sometimes representation may also be a flag. Something as simple as seeing a flag of support could make a world of a difference. When I look at the definition of a flag, it means a cloth, a symbol, of representation. This legislation that is being pushed by a Republican majority in the Florida legislature is just another attempt to remove representation of people who do not fit their mold. Members of the LGBT plus community are first of all people who deserve to have their voices heard. They are people who are deserve to be represented. The pride flag, a symbol of the LGBTQ plus community and their voice within our society, this legislation is yet another solution to a problem that does not exist. Yes. The Republicans may be in the majority and presenting some of the most heinous bills we have seen in the state of Florida. But I am encouraged. You know why I'm encouraged? I'm encouraged because we will show up, we will show out, and we will show our fight for our community. For as long as we have air through our lungs and blood pumping through our veins, our voices will be heard. Our faces will be seen. So we always say our voices are one of the most powerful tools that we have. And then we vote. And so using that tool of your voice, I challenge you to call your elected official, call your state representative, call your state senator and express how you feel about these bills. I, I wanna close on this note. We are warriors. We are warriors. And it is the way of the warrior to overcome supreme odds. So let's go out there and let's do it. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's continue to fight. Thank you for having me. I just, I have to acknowledge Representative one more time because it's incredibly brave for him to come out here. He will face much not positive, you know, feedback for being here and he had an easy excuse to not be here. So can we give him one more round of applause for going out here? We are remarkably close to being on time, which is surprising. We have just one more person who I'll introduce. But before I do that, I want to ask if I could have the, um, the group leaders uh, who uh, have the different color cards, if the group leaders could step up, as well as uh, representatives from our community partners, if you're here, just if you could kind of come along the side and we'll pull you on the stage here in a minute. Um, but before that, I'm... Uh, <laughs> 
Not quite yet, but it's always nice to see you. <laughs> so this next person who I'm going to introduce here uh, is uh, a good friend of mine, someone who has had a major impact in our community uh, from in one part his work uh, as a past chair of Dolphin Democrats and now also in his role as one of the board of directors here at the Pride Center at Equality Park. Please help me welcome Alfredo Oliveira. Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, good morning. What is it? Um, I'm not going to give you a powerful speech. I'm going to give you an assignment. My name is Alfredo Olvera, and I'm on the board of directors of the Price Center. So welcome you first. Um, here's what I need you to do. We're talking about visibility, and we're talking about rights. So I need you to pull your phone. Everybody has social media, one form or another. I'm serious. Pull your phone and do just a little post about that you're here today. And here is the reason why. Because if a hundred of you post right now, thousand other people are gonna watch it. So, pull your phone, I'm gonna give you a second. And while you do that, I'm gonna reach you what the Price Center is about, our mission statement. So, we provide a welcoming safe space, an inclusive home that celebrates, nurtures, and empowers the LGBTQ plus community and our friends and neighbors in South Florida. We will continue to work every day to provide welcoming, safe, inclusive spaces to our community, but they're coming after our rights, they're coming after institution like this, they want to erase us. So we have to be loud, we have to be visible. And before the final speaker comes up, I'm gonna leave you with that. If you don't share this information with anybody else, it doesn't work. So, second homework, second assignment. When you get, when you're done with the march, get to your email, pick 10 people, and tell them that you were here. Tell them why you were here, and tell them how they can help us. Because we can't do this alone. So, go out there, march, go home, Take a shower <laughs> and make sure that you email everybody and let them know that our rights are at stake. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to cover some quick logistics here first. I'm going to first ask that my group, my group leaders who are carrying card colors, if you'll come up to uh, the stage here. So uh, everyone was given a color card, a route card, when you came in. The reality is when we get to where we're going, we can't all be in one spot at the same time, which is exciting. It's exciting that there's too many of us to be at one spot at the time. So uh, our route leaders here, and do you want to just tell us what color you are? Blue. Blue. Purple. Green. Pink. Fabulous. So you're going to look for them as we lead because they're taking you to your first stop. There's a series of four stops. At these four stops, you'll see these signs, and this is what's really important. Let's be clear, we're, we're marching in friendly territory, and it's a lot of fun with heels, but marching in friendly territory isn't what's, what it's gonna take to make the difference we need to make today. So when you get to each one of these stops, you do have homework, and you've got about 20 minutes to do it. You're gonna hear about, uh, about issues at each stop by amazing speakers, and then you're gonna scan the QR code on here, and there's very specific actions that you'll take. You're gonna quickly be able to email your representatives. Uh, you'll be called to make certain posts, to share certain things. I ask you, you've showed up, you've done this much, please do every one of those things. Yeah. We will, yes, we will have sent Woo! thousands of emails and reach, and you can't measure the number of people we'll reach by doing this, okay? And some stuff we're doing is pretty disruptive. Like we realize we can't get, you know, the sponsors of these bills, they're not gonna change their mind and pull the bills. So we've identified from their donors, very moderate companies who have great social responsibility that don't realize that they're making donations to these individuals. You're gonna hear, because as you go through, you'll send emails to them, asking them to stop financially supporting candidates that promote hate. You gotta hit them where it hurts and the money that it takes to run their campaign is where it hurts. And you're gonna do that today. So thank you for that. I wanna ask now that we can have the community partners make sure that any other community partners are up here with us. Come on up. And I'm gonna hand it back to you to, to wrap us up. Thank you, Chris. Chris is awesome. Say yay, Chris. Yay. Speaking yay, I wanna say yay to these folks, but I also wanna welcome up our elected officials. Daryl, please join this group with us. 
Also, Don, Commissioner Don, come forward. Paul, Vice Mayor Mike, where are you, Mike? You still here? Come forward. This doesn't happen alone, folks. Look around. It takes a community like this community to come together, step away from the speaker, to come together to say our voices will be heard. Our voices will be heard. Remember while we're here, folks, we're here to change the hearts and minds of our elected officials. We're here to change the hearts and minds of all Floridians for a better future for all of us. The future ahead could be grand and wonderful for every citizen in the state of Florida, but it will take all of us, every citizen, to step up the way we are today. One more chant before we close. And there's so many chants. How about this one? Hey, hey, ho, ho, home, Homophobia has got to go. Remember that old one? Let's do that. Old school. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Homophobia has got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Homophobia has got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho. Homophobia has got to go. Well, clearly we're all tired from dancing last night because I saw very few dance moves on that. Very few hip movements. In just a moment, we'll disperse and you'll find, follow your color group out. But any of you that are taking photos or filming, take a picture of this amazing group of partners that brought us all to here today and say, thank you. Thank you. Step forward, purple leader, please. Who's my purple leader? If you have a purple sheet in your hand, follow Stephen now. Stephen's going to go through the drive, and you're going to off your way. Stephen's got his megaphone. Follow Stephen purple. Who's my pink leader?